The very first thing that our setup technicians and our setup department does when we get a housing back from the welding department is we inspect, ensure that all the tubes are welded all the way around 360 degrees to the housing. Proper housing ends are welded on for the brake application. Spring pad mounts are in the proper location for whichever chassis location you have. Housing end width and pinion offset for whichever type of car. What we do, first thing, is always inspect every component that goes into an assembly. We stone the back side of the ring gear with an 80 grit sharpening stone to ensure we knock down any high spots or burrs or nicks. We then take the pinion gear with a sanding disc, 120 grit on the die grinder, and we knock the corner off of the gear. Now doing this helps soften the corner and ensures longevity and the quietest gear assembly possible. Now I'm going to set the pinion preload. Take pinion gear with your rear pinion bearing already pressed on and predetermined shims. Slip those on, slide the pinion into the case. And now I'll slip on the front pinion bearing, the yoke. pinion washer and the pinion nut. We use an impact gun to tighten our pinion nuts. Pinion nut torque on a Dana 60 averages around 250 to 300 foot pounds of torque. So what I'll do is just hammer on this until the pinion nut will not turn and set my preload. Now after I tighten the pinion nut, I want to check the pinion preload or the rotating torque between the two bearings. I'm going to use an inch pound torque wrench and rotate it smoothly. I'm at 25 to 30 inch pounds of rotational torque or drag. Once more I'll remove the assembly, the pinion assembly, and install the pinion seal and red lock tight the nut and that will be the final pinion assembly. One thing we do at Strange Engineering is there's a spring inside the seal that retains tension around your yoke. The spring could always get tightened a little bit more to add a little bit extra sealing pressure. Even though we use a Spicer OEM pinion nut that is made as a locking nut, we still ensure that the pinion nut stays on by adding some red thread locker. Play a little bit on the pinion thread and a little bit on the pinion nut. And now I'm ready to install the center. So what I'm gonna do is roll this down, remove the main caps, so what I'm doing now is I'm adjusting the adjuster nuts, turning those all the way out so I can clear for the main carrier and the carrier bearings and everything to fit. All right, now the bearings and the ring gear have already been pressed onto the carrier, the posi unit, and the ring gear is torqued down. Now I'm installing it. You have to be careful installing this because you could easily put the teeth into a bind and then cause a burr to kick up. When you rotate it, you'll have an annoying clicking sound. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust the adjuster nuts back out to achieve my proper backlash and preload. Right, now what I do is I'll install the main caps back on, but I'll leave them loose. And I will use a strange engineering adjustment wrench. Now when checking backlash, you always want to make sure your main caps are torqued down. This ensures that your whole carrier assembly is actually sitting flush in the saddle where it needs to be. If you check it with the main caps loose, when you go to tighten your main caps, your backlash will close up. So now I'm going to torque the main caps down to 90 foot pounds.
Okay, after it's torqued down, you want to rotate the gear assembly to ensure the bearings are seated. All right, now I'm going to set a dial indicator on the housing and then check the backlash between the teeth. What you want to do is you want to rotate the ring gear to the indicator needle. Zero it out and just rock the gear back and forth. This is set at nine thousandths. It's within the range. It's a good backlash setting. The gear marking compound, all this is a grease-based paint. You paint four teeth, front and back. And you don't have to be a Picasso, you just get it on there. All right, now spinning it by the pinion with an air drill. I'm listening for any kind of gear noise, any kind of whining or howling. And also I'm running in the pattern. Now I'll rotate it around. and inspect the gear pattern. On a spicer gear, what you're looking for a street application is the coast and the drive side are gonna overlap, almost on top of each other. So if you look at the drive side here, it's centered, and rotate to the coast side, and that's centered too. So this is the perfect setup for this gear set. All right, the lock tabs just go in place, and just tighten them down, fairly tight by hand, and that's all set. Now I'm going to place the cover on. Now what we're using here is our Strange S60 cover. It's cast aluminum. Now you could use a gasket with this cover and also use a bead of silicone with the gasket to ensure a leak-proof housing. If you're installing a plain steel cover or a chrome cover, it's a must to have silicone and a gasket. Now what I'm going to do is just zip all the bolts down. Torque these bolts to 35 foot pounds. And you still want to go in a star pattern to ensure even torque and reduce the chances of warping the flange. Now we're ready to install the axles. For this particular application, going into a Mopar, there's two different length axles. There's a long and a short. The short side for a Mopar application goes on the passenger side or the right hand side of the car. Slide the axle in. You have to play with it a little bit to find the splines. It slips right in. Seat it down. We're going to use a retainer plate to hold these axles in so there's no C-clip. Install T-bolts. You just slip right into the housing end. Slip the retainer plate over the axle, we're going to install the 3 8 jet nuts and just tighten the nuts down. You getting all this? All this? <laughs> And that's it. This is fully assembled without brakes. This is how it exactly shipped from the factory to your door.